when did you start to think, actually, I could be quite good at this, or I am quite good at this, I, and, and, and setting goals around? I mean, I'm, I'm still probably trying to think that. I don't know that I could be all that good at this. Like, there's people that are effortlessly good at this, and that's kind of are like... There? It's kind of heartbreaking, really. Like, <laughs> you what know, you see is effortlessly good. Like, I'll see people where, like, I'm measuring my life to the half hour. Right. Like, I'm I'm iterating an eight week period and right. making tiny tweaks to make it more effective. And then I'm showing up on the start line, and when it's just right, I can compete with anyone in the world. Mm. But a lot of those anyone's are like rolling out of bed at an arbitrary amount of time, not tracking sleep. They have a cup of coffee and a pop tart, and they can run with me. It's mm. like, man, that's not fair. It's <laughs> not gonna make you think maybe their recipe is a decent one. It could be. I mean, it's a good argument. Mm. I just, I like obviously when you're a kid, you don't care about all these things. And what I've found is, in the things that are objectively measurable, yeah, like race times, even I, I can create a perfect state for a six-hour period more than 50% of the time by right. controlling all the stuff that I control. And then I'm restlessly tweaking that formula all the time. Is that a personality trait? Yes. Yeah, that, that part of it is, that's a talent that I have. Like, it's, it's not that I enjoy structure, because I definitely don't. If left to my own, everything in my life would be a mess and all my, like, my room would just be a strewn <laughs> pile of piles, right? Like, everything would be a mess. But because I have such a drive to like to create some still water and some blank canvas to kind of slap colors against and see what Mm. feels good. I, that that's, that's the drive that it takes for me to kind of simplify everything and, and make it a little more tidy. Where did that, I guess part of that's part of that structure is probably curiosity. It's a hundred percent. I mean, I think it is subjectively. That's what it feels like. At least it's, it's not, it's not that I like tidiness or that I like being boring or that I want to eat another can of sardines at 1 PM for every day for 50 days in a row. It's like, it's more that I really want to know if X or Y or whatever intervention works. And the only way that I can really find out, I can sit around and twiddle my thumbs until someone puts millions of dollars into testing to see if, you know, 145 pound male college athletes, Mm. if, a hydrogen supplement or like a C60 we were talking about. If a, if a C60 supplement helps them recover faster or I can just make my life stable and find out if it works for me mm-hmm. because I don't need to know. And that's, that's kind of empowering. I mean, I think we're in the, we're kind of in the sweet spot of that's what I've been drawn to from the get go. I mean, somewhere about halfway through high school, it was less that I thought I can be good enough to be like a pro at this and more that I thought you know, first I read Roger Bannister's book about breaking the four minute mile. Mm. And I liked that angle of, it's not that I think I'm better than everyone. I've measured all of my data. This is possible. I can break a four minute mile. Like I understand you're saying my heart will explode. I'll die, whatever. But it's not, it's not swagger. It's not ego. It's nothing like that. Like it's just scientific intrigue that he's like, I can do this. And like, that's, that's largely what pushes me with my own running. It's like, it's not, if you're willing to say, I can do that too. I'll say, yeah, if if you think so, dude, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it together. But if you're willing to say, well, the best I can do is this. And I think I can do better than like, you're damn right. Like I'm going to tell you that I'm, I'm shooting higher than you. Like, Let's let's make a story then if that's what we need to. So I guess that's, that's probably the genesis of a lot of it Mm -hmm. is that period of somewhere, somewhere while transitioning through high school of first getting into a few different runners, then getting into running at large, then getting into exercise physiology, then getting into anatomy and physiology in earnest. And I remember I had this moment where I was at a bookstore and I was, I forget what the book was. And I was looking for this book and I couldn't find it. And I go up front and they're like, oh, well, it's because it's in textbooks. I was like, (laughs) I was like, okay, I'm hunting for like a junior level college textbook right now for leisure reading while I'm on like winter break or something. Like this is, this is probably something that's not normal. And that was kind of the first there was a coming of age moment in there of like, okay, I'm, I'm on some sort of track here. I don't know where or what or why, but it's just, it's just, it's, that's where it gets really weird and woo woo and spiritual is you're like, I don't know why this is right, Mm. but I'm just positive that there's a lifetime of work to do in this. And it's, if endurance athlete, if endurance athletics teaches us something, one of the top things in there is like, 
thinking is rarely a good thing to do. <laughs> it's like, you're rarely going to think your way into much better. And so it's like, if you kind of know the next step to take, I tend to think you should just take that step and then take the next step and take the next step and take the next step. And at some point you'll have some beautiful picture maybe, but right now you should probably stop worrying about what step 70 is. If it's stopping you from taking step, step six or seven, it's like, just put in the work. <laughs>